All right, this video is about called what we call step functions. It's also called the greatest integer function, or even some people call it the floor function. I'll refer to it as greatest integer function or step functions, but just so you know all the names possible. Now, what is it? Let's look. Okay, the greatest integer function. Here's the definition you need to write down and you need to learn. It means the greatest integer less than or equal to an x value. Okay, remember what integer means. Integer means a whole number and it can be positive or negative. Okay, whole numbers, positive and negative, that's what makes up integers, all right? And it's less, all right, let's just look at what happens here if we do a table. Greatest integer notation looks like this. It's like double brackets around the x, okay? So let's start with some values, all right? So let's say if we have 2.5, well, what is the greatest integer less than or equal to 2.5? That would be greatest integer less than or equal to 2.5. So we're looking at the whole number, greatest whole number less than or equal to 2.5. That would be a 2, right? What if it's 2.8? Well, same thing happens. Greatest integer less than or equal to 2.8. Greatest whole number less than or equal to 2.8. Well, that's still a 2. 2. Point, what if it's 2.99999? Well, the greatest, the rule says the greatest integer less than or equal to that number. Integer means whole number. Less than or equal to the whole thing will be 2. So notice all of these values have 2. So any decimal really behind the 2 is going to ultimately have a y value of 2, right? Well, what about 0? Well, the greatest integer less than or equal to 0 is 0. Okay, what if it's 0 0.567? Well, the rule says greatest integer whole number less than or equal to this. So less than or equal to it is still 0. What happens if it becomes a negative number? 1.231. This is a little tricky, but negative 1.231. All right, greatest integer. So whole number less than or equal to this value, okay? Greatest whole number less than or equal to. If I cut it off and say negative 1, think about it. Negative 1 is actually greater than negative 1.231. So I want less than or equal to, so it would actually be a negative 2, okay? It's it kind of wonky in the negatives, but think about it. If it was negative 1.59, okay, the greatest integer less than or equal to 1.59, less than or equal to would make it negative 2. What if it was negative 3.87? Think about it. See what you come up with. Okay, greatest integer, meaning whole number that's less than or equal to this. Well, the next whole number less than or equal to it is negative 4. So notice all your y values are whole numbers, right? All your y values are integers. Okay? This is going to be important as we talk about range. Now, just so you know, in the big math world, the group of numbers that we call integers, the whole numbers that include negative and positives and zeros, has a symbol and it's a big Z with a double bar. Okay? So it looks like this. This is the symbol we use for integers every single time. So notice all your y values are integers. Your x values are not integers, except for 0 right here. All these with decimals, they're not integers. But your y values are all integers. Okay? So what happens to our graph? Well, what begins to happen as you graph is you get a step function. Okay? And it begins to look like this. And I'll show you why. All right, so let's just say right here, x and y. We're using greatest integer. Okay, so if x is 0, what's the greatest integer less than or equal to 0? It is 0, right? What if it's um, right here, 0. 0.5? If x is 0. 0.5, what's the greatest integer less than or equal to that? It's still 0. 0 0.9, greatest integer less than or equal to that, still 0. All right, and what happens when x becomes 1? Well, the greatest integer then less than or equal to 1 is 1. And I could go on and on and on, right? 1.5, the greatest integer less than or equal to 1.5 is 1. Any, 1 point anything, this is going to be a 1. So what's happening here is when I reach 1, 
my graph jumps from y equals 0 to y is, is at 1. Okay? None of these y values are decimals, right? Your y value is either 0, 1, then it jumps to 2, 3, 4, and on and on and on because remember we said all the y values are integers, they're whole numbers. There's nothing in between these whole numbers on the range. Now your x's can be decimals, but the y's are not. So it's discontinuous. These do not connect. The little steps do not connect. Okay, you have an open circle right here on the end of each step because it, when it really approaches, like this is what, 1, 2, when, it, when x is 2, this line approaches it and, and the greatest integer says it's 1 up until you get like 1.9999999 and all of a sudden it shifts to 2, it jumps. Okay? It jumps up to 2. And there we go. That's what it looks like. So this kind of gives you the general idea. And even down here, as we get to negatives, the step, the step pattern continues. All right, so let's talk general parent function. Okay, this is what you need to learn. Okay, this is the symbol here, the, t the double bracket x. All right, domain and range, we need to decipher. And we said our pattern looks like this. It's a closed circle at 0, 0, and then an open circle at 0, at 1, 0. And then it steps up, open, up, close it, open. And you could go on and on and on. Notice every single x value is covered here, right? From 0, 0 0.9, it's there. And once you get to 1, it jumps up here. Okay? Even though it's not a straight line, all those x values are included in the graph. And even as we go into the negative world, the step pattern continues. Okay? If you need me to go back over why, we can do that when we get to class. But for now, I just want you to see what this pattern is doing. Okay? And really, this point right here, 0 to 1, that's kind of your anchor point as we do transformations. If you start with this point, shifting left, right, up, and down, it'll make, make doing the transformations of step function very simple. Okay, so if you talk about domain, domain is the x values that are included on the graph. Well, we said every single x value, even the decimals between each x value, is included. So we would say it's from negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, and that's how we notated it. The range, however, remember on our chart before, looking back, remember over here, our range was all whole numbers. There were no decimals. And that's going to happen anywhere you do greatest integer. So we know our range is just integers. So we use the symbol Z with the double bar in the middle. All right? That's all I have to say for domain and range. Now, let's try transforming this. Now, remember, start, focus on this, this guy right here. That is kind of your pivot point for all your graphs as we do this, okay? So let's try one. Now, knowing your rules for transformation, we're going to just start with shifting. And let's just look at the equation. Greatest integer of x plus 2, okay? That plus 2 being outside the brackets means it's simply going to be shifted up two places, all right? Look at number 2. The plus 2 is inside the brackets, right? And if it's happening to the x, it's going to be opposite of logic. So it says plus 2, which means I'm going to move everything to the left two units. All right? So I've described the transformation. Now I'm going to graph it. All right, start with that pivot point we talked about that normally goes from 0 to 1. This is saying we're going to move it up 2. So instead of being at 0, 0, it's going to be at 0, 2. Okay? And, you know, graph me three or four of these steps. That way I kind of know that you have the idea. And then from there, the step pattern continues. Okay? If you just start from that initial, pit, that initial point, you can begin to see how it shifted. So we took our parent function and basically moved it up two units, right? And we started with this point right here. This was the same point that was at the origin on the first graph, okay? Now, what about on number two? We got to take that same point, and instead of moving it up two, we're going to move it to the left two. So I'm going to go over two, close circle to open circle, all right? There's that pivot point. Now I need to come up with my lines. Make them pretty uniform if you can. And I'm going to shift from there, okay? Keeping the step pattern.
and then we get we get the oops that should be up. okay you get the idea so what do we do we moved it left two all right that's the idea here we start remember that pivot point where did we start we started with that pivot point we just moved it to the left two you don't have to highlight on your homework I'm just showing you where we started we just moved it left all right so shifting is really not so bad if you have that initial step just start there now let's talk about so before we move on on your homework you're going to be asked to tell me what's the domain notice the x values have not changed that this should have been like that x values are negative infinity to positive infinity and our range again because of because of the um, greatest integer function, I'm adding an integer to an integer, I'm going to get an integer, okay? Same thing here. I'm at, I may have a decimal and I'm adding something to it, but the greatest integer function is going to make it an integer. So that means my domain is still the same. My range is just the integers as well, okay? All right. Shrinking and stretching. All right, so to shrink and stretch, Probably the easiest thing to do would be for you to just see what happens by doing a t-table, okay? And and we know that whatever decimal we pick, we're going to come up with a whole number answer, right? But in this case, it's two times whatever integer we create, okay? So if we, let's just start with zero, okay? Zero point one doesn't matter. Zero point one, the greatest integer less than or equal to zero point is zero times 2 is still 0, right? So we know it's going to be at 0, and this step is in the same place as before. But what if it's like 1.2, okay? 1.2, if we put it in the integer function, greatest integer less than or equal to 1.2 is 1. 1 times 2 is 2. So instead of just going up one step, it's like taking two steps at a time. It's going to jump up, all right? And you will see that this pattern would continue on. It's going to keep jumping up two steps. So what's happening is the space between your steps is two steps instead of just one. And you can follow that pattern down. Um, let's see, this we said would be a two. It, let's say if it's negative, um, negative 0 0.5, okay? Greatest integer less than or equal to negative 0 0.5 is still negative one, less than or equal to, remember? Negative one times two is negative two, so that's down here. Okay. And the steps would just continue on, but it jumps, the y values jump by 2. That's what's happening when you do that. All right, so my domain, I would say, is negative infinity, positive infinity, because all the x values are represented. But what's happening to my y values is not every single integer is showing, because there are gaps, right, because we're taking two steps at a time. So what's happening is it's the integers, but it's two times every integer, right? So if I came up with 1, I'd multiply by 2, and that would give me the y values. So you can just represent that as 2z. Now, on the reflection, remember that there's a minus there. So that's a reflection, and the 1 half means I'm going to shrink my graph. And let's do, let's just 0 0.1 it, okay? Greatest integer less than or equal to 0 0.1 is 0. 0 times negative 1 half is still 0. So where x is 0 all the way to where x becomes 1, I know it's still at our basic initial step, okay? Now, when x becomes 1 something, let's see what happens. Let's say it's 1.5. 1 1.5, greatest integer less than or equal to 1.5 is 1. 1 times negative 1 half is negative 1 half, right? So if this is 1, negative 1, here's negative 1 half. So now, look, my staircase is going to go down, downward, all right? And you can predict that it's going to just continue going the opposite direction one step at a time and you could continue on with the t-table if you so desired but really it's just reflecting your graph and taking down half a step at a time all right so you would want to make sure you labeled your graph accordingly so like at negative one if I put a negative one here negative one greatest integer less than or equal to negative one is negative one times negative one half is positive one half so this would be coming up here so this would be one and this would be two right 
But you get the idea, hopefully, that this is what's happening is we're going up by half a step now. You just need to label your graphs really closely. So my domain, let's think about it. What x values are contained in this graph? Every x value, the range, well, it's integers, because that's what this is going to give you, right? It's integers times one half. Now, why do we say not negative one half? Because we have positive half values for y up here in the two quadrants, right? So we don't say negative one half. That negative is just changing the direction of our graph, not the y values. All right? So I know it's a lot. Let's just talk about it when you get to class, and hopefully you'll get your brain wrapped around it. The ba basic idea is keeping that shape of the step function and being able to do basic transformations. Okay?